Uh, why don't we pray for Ian now uh, before he comes and shares God's word to us this morning. Uh, Father God, we thank you for Ian, Lord. Thank you for um, his life. Thank you for his heart. Thank you for the passions and the wisdom that you've given him. And Father, we want to honour him as our leader. We want to uh, hear your word um, that he brings this morning. Father, we, we pray your blessing on him. We pray your spirit will overflow from him. And Father, may we see your words of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Stuart. Happy New Year, everyone. I'll add my uh, greetings for the new year to what Stuart gave us at the start of the year. It's been a really interesting Christmas season, hasn't it? I don't know how you've found it. Um, in some ways, I've quite enjoyed um, slimming down Christmas, um, maybe not at the waist level, um, but in terms of, of having a quieter uh, Christmas and having to do things a bit more simply. But I know for many of us, uh, there's been a lot of challenge in that as well. And I was struck as we passed into a, a new year, um, lots and lots of enthusiasm and excitement about stepping into 2021. Uh, and a lot of that, I think, was because people just wanted to leave behind the pressure and, uh, and the pain from 2020. And I was very mindful when I was uh, picking up that and uh, sensing some of that, that actually just the changing of a date doesn't change anything. Um, there is an opportunity in the changing of a date to reflect. There's an opportunity to leave some stuff behind. But actually just physically moving from one day to another doesn't change anything. And I think it's really important as God's people that we're aware of that. So we put our hope in the right things. And actually what does change things is when we root ourselves in Jesus. And as we start 2021, my encouragement to you at the very start of this year is that we make a decision as God's people that we're going to root ourselves in God. We have no idea let's be honest we have no idea what is ahead of us in 2021 and even the first few weeks of 2021 uh, seem like they're going to have more challenge in them than maybe we were anticipating however Jesus promises us that we can prosper and thrive in every circumstance and the way we do that is by rooting ourselves in God and so the truth is if we root ourselves in Jesus at the start of this new year then we will bear fruit whatever is happening in the world around us and at the start of every new year I ask God for two things I ask him for a passage of scripture and I ask him for an individual word a kind of word for the year and uh, if you're uh, of long been a member of Restore, you'll know that every January uh, we start the new year with me sharing those things. I, I think there's many things about, there's many different aspects to uh, leadership. It's a privilege to be in leadership in God's people. But I think the primary calling of a leader is to hear what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us and then point us in that direction. In Revelation chapter two and three, there's a, a letter that John writes to seven churches and every one of those letters uh, ends in the same way. And it ends with a, with a message that says, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And then in every one of those seven instances, the very next verse says, and to him who overcomes. And we become an overcoming people when we listen to what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us as a church. And so I've been praying and uh, trying to discern what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us as a church, as restore, as we enter into 2021. And what I want to do uh, for the next half hour or so is just share really what, what is on my heart and what I sense the Spirit of God is speaking to us as we enter into 2021. So the passage that the Lord's put on my uh, heart is from Isaiah chapter 42. If I give you a bit of context to this uh, passage, it's really interesting because Isaiah, you can split into two halves. Uh, there's chapters 1 to 40, which is Isaiah's words to Israel as they're struggling. And uh, there's a lot of challenge in that. There's a, a lot of uh, uh, God's heart coming through in terms of wanting to return his people to focusing again on him. And then they end up uh, not listening to God's words. So they end up in uh, captivity being taken off into exile. And then the second half of Isaiah 40, uh, Isaiah 40 through to Isaiah 66, Isaiah speaks words of hope and he points towards the coming of Jesus who is the great hope bringer. And even in the hardest circumstance, God is reaching out to his people. And the first uh, prophetic uh, chapter 
when it speaks about the coming saviour to come is Isaiah 42. And the passage that I felt that God was speaking over restore, over us as a people for 2021, is Isaiah chapter 42, verses 5 to 6. Now, I'm going to read them from a couple of translations. I think it's helpful sometimes to read them from different translations because different translations uh, pick out a slightly different emphasis and to, to catch the full heart of what God's speaking, it's good to look at different translations. So to begin with, we're going to look at the uh, NASB, the New American Standard uh, Version. Uh, I really like it. It's a very literal translation. So uh, this should come up on the screen now in front of you. Isaiah 42, verses 5 to 6 it says this. It says, this is what God the Lord says, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and its offspring, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I've called you in righteousness. I will also hold you by the hand and watch over you. And I will appoint you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations. They're great verses, aren't they? Really, really powerful. And I want to encourage you to reflect on them over the coming days. I'm going to read it again, this time from the message. The message is a, is a paraphrase. It's not a literal translation, but it brings out some of the nuances. It's actually a pretty accurate paraphrase. Eugene Peterson did a great job with it. So uh, those same verses from the message say this. God's message the God who created the cosmos, who stretched out the skies, who laid out the earth and all that grows from it, who breathes life into earth's people, makes them alive with his own life. I am God. I've called you to live right and well. I've taken responsibility for you, kept you safe. I've set you among my people to bind them to me and provided you as a lighthouse to the nations. And like I say, God uh, really put that passage on my uh, heart over the last couple of months. So I've been praying into it. But there's three things in particular that I feel the Lord is particularly wanting us to grab hold of as we enter into 2021 as Restore as a church. And so three aspects of those verses I just want to speak briefly about. But it starts off and it talks about uh, the message translation says, the God who created the cosmos who breathes life into earth's people. And the passage starts off with reminding Israel that they need to see once more the bigness of God and let that bigness of God do something in their spirit and in their heart. And the first thing I feel like God's saying to us as Restore as we enter into 2021 is I believe God's saying we need to recapture the wonder of who God is. We need to recapture once more the wonder of who God is. And what happens in times of uh, trouble and testing is quite often the size of our circumstance seems to grow and our view of God tends to shrink. And you see that in Numbers 13 when Israel is sending out uh, spies to view out the promised land. And uh, remember, Israel had seen loads of amazing miracles. They'd seen the parting of the Red Sea. They'd seen the, the freeing from Egypt. They'd seen the gods of Egypt all defeated. And then they were in the desert looking towards the promised land. And the spies go out and they view the promised land. And they come back and they say, there's giants in the land. And we were like grasshoppers. And you see, their vision of their circumstances has gone like that. And their perspective of God has gone like that. Now, I think for many of us in 2020, we've experienced that same thing happen. And I believe at the start of 2021, God's saying, recapture, remind yourself of who I am. Because the truth is, God has not changed. He's still the God who created the cosmos. He's still the God who created me. He's still the God who's victorious in Jesus. He's still uh, the God who reigns uh, above all circumstances, all situations. He's still in charge. He still has more authority than every sickness, including COVID. He still is able to bring hope. He still has resurrection power and resurrection life. And he's wanting to breathe that afresh in us. And so one of the things I felt that God was saying is as we enter into 2021, take some time to recapture the wonder of who I am. 
And the story I was reminded of uh, was in Genesis chapter 15, and it's the story in the life of Abraham. And Abraham has, goes on quite a journey with God, as I'm sure you're aware of. Uh, but part of his journey is, will he really believe that in his old age, God can fulfill a promise and still give him a son? And at one of those moments of struggle, God takes Abraham outside and he says to Abraham, now look up at the stars. And Abraham has a moment that he looks up at the sky at night and he counts the stars. And then God speaks to him and he says, I'm going to give you as many descendants as the stars on the sky. And you see what happens in those moments is God uh, changes Abraham's perspective and helps him see again that the one who's called him, the one who's leading him by the hand, that same God is the God who created the stars in the sky, created the whole world. And the God that we worship is that very same God. And he's got us and he's walking with us and he's carrying us and he's still at work. We just need to take some time to lay aside the other stuff, tune out of the other voices, put the circumstances and situations back in their rightful place, let them shrink, let the voices of the media zone out and tune in to the fact that we have a God who is victorious. We have a God who loves us. We have a God who's with us. We have a God who's, who's good and at work in our lives for good things. At the start of 21, I feel like God's saying, re capture a sense of wonder. I heard this phrase just before Christmas and I love it. Um, the phrase goes, we need to get a sense of wow when we look at God before we ask why or what. And I feel for us as Restore at the start of 21, uh, we need to capture a sense of wow. Look how amazing Jesus is. Wow, look how good God is. Wow, look again at the bigness of God. Wow, look again at the faithfulness and the truth of who God is. Next week, we're going to do the Sunday morning slightly differently. We're going to spend the whole morning worshipping the bigness of God. Jodie and I are going to lead us through it, but we're going, to get, let, uh, we're going to give room and space for the God who created the cosmos to become big in our vision once more and to let his breath and life give life, feed life, nourish our spirits. So the first thing I feel that God's speaking out of Isaiah 42 is a sense that we re need to recapture a sense of wonder of who God is. The second phrase that struck me out of that passage, um, it goes on and it says, I've called you to live right and to live well. I've called you to live right and to live well. And the thing I felt God in particular was speaking out of that for us as a church in 2021 is it's a time to reconnect in healthy friendship. It's a time to reconnect in healthy friendship. Now, this season has been a challenge, a long challenge, hasn't it? And one of the challenges has been, how do we do relationship when we can't go about life in the way that we historically would have done? And that's had lots of challenge in it, lots of uh, potential to be isolated and separated. What I've loved and I've seen start to happen out of that is people reconnect in different ways. And uh, one of the things that I've loved about that and been encouraged about that is church is not about a Sunday meeting. That's not a biblical definition of church. What we're doing this morning is we're providing an opportunity to worship and we're providing spiritual input they are key ingredients of church life, but that isn't what church is really all about. Church is about a community of people sharing life. And as we haven't been able to gather physically on a Sunday morning, and praise God for uh, the gift of technology and the gifting that God's given uh, the people within Restore to be able to do this, so grateful we've been able to do this well. But actually, this isn't really what church is all about. Church is about everyday relationship. And what I've loved is the way that people have started to turn up on one another's doorsteps. People have rung one another. People have given gifts to one another. And the church has started to operate outside of a Sunday. And I believe there's something really significant in that and really important that we need to lean into. And one of the things I feel like God's saying for 2021 is relationships, friendships uh, are going to be really important. And so prioritize the place of friendship and relationship as God's people. 
And uh, like I say, I know we've all been struggling and uh, having challenges over the last uh, year or so at different points in different ways. I know there's been some good stuff for people as well. Don't want to take away from that. But there has been quite a lot of challenge. Now, I'm, um, I think, quite a robust person. I like that word, robust. It's a good word, isn't it? I'm quite a, a robust person, I think, and uh, I quite like a fresh challenge. So in some ways, there's quite a lot about 2020 that I've quite enjoyed in a kind of perverse sort of way in terms of getting over the challenge. But uh, at the beginning of November, I hit a wall, which is really unusual for me. I really, really hit a wall um, and, and struggled. Uh, what was interesting was in the middle of that, um, I... Uh, had a Zoom lined up with, with uh, one of my friends, one of my other leader friends. Uh, I've always prioritised uh, relationship with other leaders. I think it's a really good thing to do, an important thing to do as a leader. So I had, had a, a Zoom meeting with one of my leader friends. He's very into the living free stuff that we do. And uh, he caught me on my really bad day. And, uh, and so he knew that I was struggling. And uh, he knew that that was unusual for me. Uh, what was amazing out of that was just by talking to him, he then got some people um, lined up to pray for me. And by the next week, I had uh, breakfast with one of my friends and coffee. I had lunch with one of my friends. And actually, it changed everything, just reconnecting with some people. And the physical situation didn't change. But knowing there was someone alongside me, that changed everything. And when you look at the creation story at the beginning of uh, Genesis... And what you find is on every day of creation, when it ends, God says it was good. And uh, after the sixth day and he makes mankind, he says it's very good. And there's a rhythm of good, 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 good. But in those early chapters of Genesis, there's one time that God says it's not good. And it's when Adam is on his own. And God says it's not good for man to live alone. And then he creates Eve to be alongside her. And in the first five chapters of the Old Testament, actually, there's two times that God says it's not good. One is when Adam's on his own and he hasn't got Eve alongside to help and encourage and lead with him. The other is in Exodus chapter 18, when Moses is feeling overwhelmed with the pressure of leadership. And his father-in-law comes and visits him. And he says to Moses, it's not good to lead alone. And so from the early chapters of the Old Testament, we find that God didn't make us to live alone and he didn't make us to lead alone. And as we start 2021, I really feel that one of the things that God's saying is we need in this new year to prioritise and value friendship. I said I struggled last uh, November. One of the things that came out of that was um, I had the opportunity of connecting with the Glasgow Prophetic Centre. They're really good. They're well worth uh, connecting with. You can do a Google search and go on their website. One of the things they offer is they offer prophetic sessions for senior leaders of churches. So as soon as I saw that, I thought, right, I'm up for that. So I sent them an email and said, can we, can Chris and I have a prophetic session with you? Fortunately, they came back and said yes. And we had uh, four of their uh, prophets spent 40 minutes just prophesying over us, which was amazing. One of the really interesting things in that, though, was uh, one of the things that came through was they said to me, they said, I don't know where you're at in terms of friendship, but I feel that God's saying what's going to be significant for you going forward is the friendships I'm putting around you. And uh, they went on and they said, I don't know how you cope in terms of the busyness of life and the pressures of life. But they said often what I think happens in the pressures of life is we value task over friendship and friendships are the added extra. So I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I've got to do the other. And if I've got any spare time then I'll invest it in friendship. And one of the things they said that they felt God was speaking to me was that I needed to flip that. And actually, I needed to prioritise the friendships. And if I prioritised the friendships, the work stuff would fall into place. And as I've been reflecting on that and praying over it, I believe that's not just a word for me. I think it is a word for me. And I've looked at my 2021 diary to try and um, uh, respond to that. I actually think it's a word for us as restore. I feel like the Lord's saying, if you will value friendship above task and activity, then you will see me work in a new way. 
And I would just really encourage you, as you reflect on uh, this morning's uh, service, as you pray over the coming weeks, one of the things to be asking God about is, who are my key friends? Who are my key relationships that I need to prioritize for the next season? And I really, really feel like the Lord is saying, invest in a few friendships and you will be amazed at what you see me happen. So, again, one of the things that I feel God's saying for the new year is we need to recapture a sense of wonder at who God is. Second thing is we need to reinvest in some healthy friendships. And the third thing that comes out of that passage is, is the very last verse, which um, I really love. It says, I've set you among my people to bind them to me and provided you as a lighthouse to the nations. I, I've long carried in my heart a vision of a church that is like lights scattered across the communities that they live in. I think so often when we think about church, we think about church as being a gathering. We think about church as being a meeting. And we think about all those people coming together and all of our lights shining. And in a sense, it is, there is something wonderful about coming together. I'm not saying that that isn't valuable or important. And actually, the, the, in the scripture, we're told not to neglect that. For me, that is really important. I love, I love a, a, a good gathering. I do. I really, really do. But a gathering is the point to get invested in and encouraged so we can then live the rest of the week on mission for Jesus. And I believe what has happened that is good out of the COVID season is we've become a scattered church. And a scattered church has an opportunity to shine its light into the darkness, into our dark streets, into our struggling communities. We have an opportunity to take the love and the life and the goodness of Jesus and shine that light on other people. One of the things we felt God was saying in the lead up to Christmas, uh, hopefully you pick this up, but we felt, that, uh, we felt that God was saying that hope was going to be really important. And we needed to carry hope to people who were struggling with a sense of hopelessness and a sense of living in darkness. And so we made that our theme of our Christmas uh, uh, series. Now, we were praying. One of the things that we felt is that we needed to do something locally for our neighbours and we needed a way to carry hope. And, uh, and Chris was praying and she came across some Christmas tree baubles and uh, you could buy them from King Suvi Hope. Um, but you could buy a Christmas tree bauble and it simply said on it, hope. And so Chris ordered uh, 12 of them and uh, we prayed over who we should give those baubles to and we could literally give a gift of hope. Now, there was a, a few people in the, in, in the church that we thought we should give them to, so we went and visited them and gave them to them. But to every one of our neighbours, we gave the gift of hope. And it was amazing to see the impact of that. I went and knocked on some people's doors, and people I don't know very well, and basically said to them, I know this has been a crummy year. We wanted to do something positive for you to bring a bit of hope. And as soon as people heard those words, it's like they opened their door and they were like, wow, this is amazing. And uh, just the other day, one of our neighbours from down the road, um, he, he was driving by, stopped his van and called out to me and said, you will never know how much that meant to my wife and I for someone to give us hope that we could hang on our tree. Now, it cost us very little. Physically, it cost us, financially, it cost us very little. In terms of time, it cost us very little. But just being alert and sensitive to the Spirit of God and doing one simple act enabled us to shine something of the light and the goodness of Jesus. Now, I know that's just one incident that we did. I know that loads of you did loads of things, probably that were even better and more powerful than that. But isn't that the way that church ought to be? Isn't that an opportunity? Isn't that a little bit of what it is to be a lighthouse to the nations, to be uh, people who protect people from the rocks, protect a community from the rocks, and take something of the love and the goodness of Jesus? So for me, there's three things, really, I feel that God's speaking from Isaiah 42 to us as a church as we enter into 2021. One, we need to recapture something of the wow of the bigness of God. Number two, we need to prioritise friendship. And number three, we need to embrace being a scattered church and a church that will bring light and radiate light out into our community. 
Now, normally when we start 2021, we start it with 21 days of prayer and fasting. It's been a key part of our church calendar. I think it's a really, really good thing to do. But as we were praying over the beginning of 2021, what we sensed God was saying is don't make 21 days of prayer and fasting. Rather, make it 21 days of wellness. And so starting next Sunday, so Sunday the 10th of January, we're going to embark in three weeks, 21 days of encouraging one another to invest in our spiritual life and our emotional well-being. And I don't know how many of people can remember, you know, in the olden days, in the pre-COVID days, you used to be able to catch a plane and uh, fly to another nation. I, I know this is a, a very old thing for many of us now, but when you used to, I'll just remind you, when you used to get on a plane and they used to go through that safing briefing that normally you would zone out of and not listen to at all, there'd always be a point in that where they talk about what happens if the cabin loses pressure. And when they talked about what happens when the cabin loses pressure, they would talk about an oxygen mask coming down from the ceiling. And they would say, if you've got children, put your own mask on first, and then you can care for your children. And uh, one of the things we felt as we enter into 2021, that God was speaking to us, was invest in your own wellness, and then you'll be able to tend to the wellness of others. And so for us, starting next Sunday, we're going to launch 20, uh, 21 days of wellness. And uh, we're going to do it in three seven-day cycles. The first week is going to be about worship, recapturing the wonder of who God is. And uh, hopefully we've got your details. If we haven't got your details, can you uh, send us a, a message on the website, the bottom of the website? You can fill in your details. We'll get in contact with you. You can be on our email list. But we're going to send out daily videos encouraging one another, resourcing one another to rediscover the wonder of God in week one as we look at worship. In week two, we're going to invest in friendship. And uh, I know that's going to be challenging in some ways because we can't mix households in this season. What we can do, though, is we can WhatsApp people, we can ring people, we can turn up at their doorstep and say hi to them. And we want to invest in significant friendship. Remember that word, that friendship is going to be really important this year. I would encourage you to find a small group of people and invest deep for 2021 and see the impact it makes on your spiritual wellness. And then the third week, we're going to have a week of generosity. Now, why are we going to have a week of generosity? Well, because God's heart is to love and the expression of God's loving is giving. And Jesus says it's more, there's more blessing in giving than receiving. And so on the third week, we're going to invest in our emotional wellness by blessing other people. Because when you bless someone else, you get a real sense. It does something for your own spirit. Do you know, my greatest gift over Christmas was the response of that neighbour to being given the gift of hope. It does something when you give to uh, other people. So the, the first week, we're going to look at the wow, the bigness of God. We're going to spend a week worshipping. The second week, we're going to invest in friendship. The third week, we're just going to be generous. And uh, that may be generous in terms of our finances. Maybe you want to give some money to someone. It may be generous in terms of our time. It may be generous in terms of, of speaking a word of blessing or encouragement to somebody. There's lots of different ways we can be generous. But let's look out and be generous to one another. And so we're going to do that kicking off next Sunday and the beginning of each uh, week, we'll have a Sunday that we uh, sow some vision about it, share some vision about it. And as I say, there'll be daily videos just to encourage us that you can get on board with as well. When we finish that, as we step into February, we're going to do a season of praying blessing over our local community. The next series we're going to do on a Sunday morning is going to be about the things that Jesus called us to pray for. So we're going to look through the, the Lord's Prayer. But then uh, through, the, through the season of Lent, from the 17th of February to the 3rd of April, we're going to have 40 days, again, not, not giving up something, but investing in something. And we're going to do 40 days of blessing our neighbourhood and blessing our community. We're going to uh, download together, hopefully, an app on our phones, uh, which is called Prayer Atlas. And on it, we'll be able to log the places that we've walked around our local community and prayed blessing. And uh, Prayer Atlas works all the way around the world as well. So if you're tuning in from South Africa today or Zambia or Devon, um, you'll be able to join in as well and log where you're prayer walking. And we're simply going to use that time to bathe our local community in prayer. You might remember we've used the anachronism blessed before. 
that God calls us to be a blessing to others. And that says the B stands for begin with prayer. So we're going to begin in terms of serving our local community by, with prayer and praying God's blessing over it. Uh, the L stands for listening. We're then going to pray for opportunities to listen to the Holy Spirit and listen to people and hear what their needs are. E stands for eat. We don't know whether we'll be able to eat together by then, but if we can, um, what the eat really stands for is an opportunity to build relationship. So we're going to create opportunities then to build relationship. And the S is for serving and the, the final S is for then sharing your story. Remember, you share God's love before you share God's word. And when you share God's love, it builds a platform to be able to then share God's word. And so we're going to do 40 days of blessing and praying blessing over our local community. And you can do that whether that's your workplace community. You can do that whether you're a teacher in a school. It might be a school community. Or you can do that in your local community, in your local street. But this year we want to embrace that whole call from God to be a blessing to others. Now, if I sense there was a passage of scripture for us that was significant for 2021, it's the passage from Isaiah 42 that we've been looking at this morning. And as I say, I want to encourage you to keep reading it. Let it get into your spirit. Uh, really pray into it and start to embrace it, because I really do believe it's what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us as Restore coming into 2021. I also ask God for one word, one key word that's kind of going to lead us into uh, 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 2021. Um, if you were a part of Restore at the beginning of 2020, you might remember the key word that God gave me for 2020. I don't know whether anyone does remember it and shout at your TV, put it on the live stream chat. I'm sure there's going to be lots of pause now because people are going to say, I have no idea what that was. Do you know what the word was? Simplify. Simplify. We had no idea what was going to happen on the back of that, but boy, if we had to simplify. It's interesting, the power of tuning into God's word. When I was asking God for one word for 2021, the word that God gave me was, it's a time to rebuild. It's the word rebuild. Isaiah 61 verse 4, from which we get our name, it talks about rebuilding the ancient ruins and restoring the places long devastated. And I felt that what God was speaking over us as a church for 2021 was he saying, now is the time to start to rebuild. And what I felt was significant in it is I felt that God was saying, for rebuilding, we need to rebuild the kind of church God has called us to become, not necessarily the kind of church we were. So not a sense of we're going back to what was, but a sense of we're stepping into. I believe there's an opportunity to embrace something new. And so I felt like God said, uh, as it kind of embraces our, as, as our mantra. I don't know if I'm allowed to use that in a, in a preach. Um, but uh, kind of uh, the word that echoes in our ears and in our hearts, in our spirits for 2021, is now's the time I'm going to rebuild. I'm going to rebuild my relationship with Jesus. I'm going to rebuild um, into the, uh, I'm going to rebuild my church relationships. I'm going to rebuild uh, where I see brokenness in the community around us. And uh, as I say, there's that sense of stepping forward into something and building, uh, embracing what God's called us to. So the three things that I feel like God's saying to us that we need to be rebuilding. Number one, we need to be rebuilding a community of worship. When God's people in the Old Testament rebuilt the city of Jerusalem, they started by building an altar first. So rebuild. Church is all about worshipping Jesus. Jesus has to be the centre of everything we do. He has to be the focus. He has to be the heart. He has to be the one that we please. It has to be all about Jesus. So rebuild a church where Jesus is the centre, the vision, the hope, the focus of absolutely everything that you do. Secondly, rebuild a church that has a sense of belonging for all, everyone, every day, everywhere has a place in God's people. And thirdly, that sense that we all are missionaries. Do you know, when Jesus went to heaven at the end of his time on earth, he didn't say to his disciples, create a cozy church group and invite everyone else to come and join you. He said, go into all the world and make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then I will be with you. And I believe God's called us as a people to be a community of missionaries who embrace that commission 
to receive an anointing of the Holy Spirit because he kicks it off with all authority in heaven and earth is given to me. Therefore, receive that spirit. Go in that spirit, but go and see the world changed. And 12 people surrendered to the Spirit of God. Actually, it was 120 by the time they gathered together in the upper room in Acts chapter 2. But 120 people breathed on by the Spirit of God saw 3,000 people. Peter's first sermon, he saw 3,000 people get saved. And then we see the church breaking out from homes, not from, not from church meetings, from homes, from uh, lived out local relationships. As a church, we want to re-embrace that. As a church, we want, to, it, it, we want to commission everyone to live on mission for Jesus. We want to say, yes, you can. Yes, the Holy Spirit is there for you. Yes, you can do it. In your first sermon, you can see 3,000 people, maybe more, come to know Jesus. And if that happens, do you know what? There's no way I'm leading Restore because uh, <laughs> we're going to have to trust the Holy Spirit to take us forward because there's no way we'll have the infrastructure to do that. Wouldn't that be amazing because it's an outbreak of God because we've recaptured the fact that the kind of church that God's called us to build and rebuild is a church that's all about Jesus. It's all about loving everyone, every day, everywhere. And it's about commissioning everyone, every day, to live out the Spirit of God everywhere. And then we will see God's kingdom come. The one last thing that I just want to spend a couple of minutes talking about is where we're going to go in terms of Sunday and gatherings. Uh, you'll know the latest COVID stats. We're in tier four. That's tier four is code for we're putting you into lockdown again, but finding a different name to call it. Um, so we're back in, in tier four, I suspect, for a little while. Um, because of that, uh, we don't feel as a church um, that it would be right for us to be physically gathering together. So we're going to prioritise through uh, this uh, latest season of lockdown, stroke tier four. We're going to prioritise uh, online. We're going to set up things here so that long term we're able to do live stream. Um, I uh, believe that it would be wise to get vaccinated when the vaccine is, is available to everyone. I will be there first in the queue by the time they get to me. Um, I think that's a, 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 a wise, prudent thing to do. But vaccination isn't going to solve the whole problem overnight. We're in this for a while yet, I think. I'm sorry to say that if that's discouragement, um, but I suspect at least until Easter, we're, we're in this before we start to see, as maybe as we head towards the summer, things to open up and a bit more sense of normality reappear. Um, through that period, we're going to continue with the live stream. And actually, whatever happens in the future in terms of gathering, we will continue to live stream. We're going to set up the building here so that we're able to start taking people. So we can take people when we're able to. But live stream here is here to stay. On Demand Church is here to stay. We have the technology and the gifting to push into that. And we're going to continue to push into that. We also know, though, that churches are called to gather. And there's a power in gathering. And so in the autumn, we spent a lot of time just praying over uh, where we should gather, how we should gather, when we should gather. Um, and we identified six locations and got verbal agreement to be able to open up six premises as gathering points. Now, when we can gather and when we feel it is safe to be able to gather, we will begin the process of opening those gathering points. Now, what we decided is we felt that God was saying, start to build church from the ground up, which is why at the moment we're going to invest in relationship and friendship. When we can gather, we're going to begin the process of gathering. These six locations are not six new congregations. They're just gathering locations. We've particularly looked at smaller buildings. The reason we've looked at smaller buildings is because it's easier to run under COVID regulations. It's easier to run a smaller meeting and to find ways of covering kids' work. So we've looked at smaller locations where it's easier to facilitate gatherings. We've also looked at locations where it's possible for us to add on to any Sunday gatherings that we do the opportunity of maybe doing weekday things as well, because we want to be lights into our local community. So where we are at the moment is we've got verbal agreement to open up six gathering points. As I say, when we begin the process of doing it, we won't open all six at the same time. We won't do weekly gatherings at all six at the same time. We'll do something like possibly monthly gatherings, um, uh, which means there will be one at least every week 
So if uh, you want to gather every week and you're able to book in in time, uh, there will be an opportunity to do that. Remember, the live stream will be going all the time. Um, as we work out the safety, as we work out how they go, as we work out the appetite for gathering, we will then uh, add uh, in terms of frequency. So we're basically going to take one step and then see where it goes. Now, the six locations that we've got verbal agreement to be able to open are these. Um, so there's one in Winchmore Hill, which is close to where our Enfield uh, congregation uh, had been meeting. Uh, there's one in Enfield Highway, that's, uh, that's Albany Church, which is coming on stream as a full Restore congregation in 2021. It's great to have you joining with us, uh, Albany. We uh, love how God's brought us together for the next season. Um, the third one is Woodford Bridge, that's here. So we're going to redo here, so we're going to be able to live stream, but also when we're able to, we'll be able to add people into the meeting here. We've got an option on being able to use a Sunday morning uh, uh, building uh, in the Buckhurst Hill end of Loughton. That's uh, not too far away from the Oakwood Hill Community Centre. So again, it's a good platform for reaching out into the local community. Uh, we've got verbal agreement on a building in Debden that we're going to be able to open up and begin uh, 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 gatherings at. We've also been working on a gathering in the Thaden Boys Epping side of things. I, would, I have a passion in 2021 that we start to see God doing something, or we're able to join God in what he's already doing, is probably better terminology for it. We're able to uh, step into what God is already doing in, the, in particularly the Epping and Harlow community. And I think a step towards Thaden Boys and a gathering over there will enable us to gather some of our vision carriers from uh, Epping and Harlow. So when we're able to, we're going to aim to begin gatherings there. Uh, uh, let me just remind you, it won't be like church was because under the current restrictions, we can't do it like that. So we have to socially distance. Uh, we're still not able to sing publicly. So we will have some worship and you'll be able to hum along under your mask. Um, or enjoy it, but you won't be able to sing gustily in the way that we used to when we gathered together. We'll have to do children's ministry different. Uh, we're going to do a different model to some extent in terms of church. So we'll do worship. There'll be an opportunity to gather around the word of God together. And there'll be an opportunity to share testimony and encourage one another in terms of what God's doing in our lives. So we'll give you more detail uh, on that as we get towards it. Like I say, as we're currently in tier four lockdown, I suspect that's still a month or two away. But we are moving towards that. It's one of the next steps we'll take. Also, if you live near or you have a heart to impact the community around any of those locations, can you be praying about what that might look like? And can you get in touch with us? Because we would also love to gather some people who have a sense of, I'm going to live my life on mission and I'm going to see this neighbourhood impacted for Jesus. And so, like I say, we've got gatherings that we potentially can do around Winchmore Hill, around Enfield Highway, around Woodford Bridge, uh, right here, the Buckerstill end of Loughton, around Debden, and uh, Thaden Boys looking towards uh, Epping and Harlow. So if you're potentially interested in taking a lead in terms of being a lighthouse into those local communities, can you start praying about it and can you get in touch with us? So that's few, a few of the things that we feel like God's saying leading into 2021. I want to come back and just remind us a little bit about uh, what I feel God's saying for 2021. The one word for the year is it's a time to rebuild. Rebuild the kind of church God's called us to be. That's a church centred on and focused on Jesus. It's a church that values everyone and values relationship. And it's a church that embraces a sense that we're called to live on mission. And we're going to begin it by investing in our own wellness. And we're going to invest in our own wellness by recapturing a sense of wonder of who God is. Recapture the wow before we think about the what and the why and the where. Then we're going to invest in relationship, friendship with one another. And then we're going to invest in generosity to others. And as I say, we'll talk some more about that over the, the coming weeks. But why don't you embrace Isaiah 42 and begin reading it, begin praying over it, begin asking Jesus what he's speaking to you about it. Wherever you are, do you want to just put down your book right now? I invite the worship team to come back and take up their positions. Just think it'd be really good as we step into a new year to take a couple of moments and just surrender our lives afresh to Jesus at the start of this new year. So 
Maybe you just want to sit quietly. Maybe you want to stand and put your hands out. I'm an active person. I always like doing that. Uh, maybe you want to kneel. Maybe you even want to lie on the floor. It's a sign of surrender to God. Whatever would help you at the start of this new year to present yourself afresh to Jesus. Why don't you just do that? Lord Jesus, thank you that at the start of this new year, we are able to present ourselves afresh to you. And Lord, if there's one thing that 2020 has taught us, it's that we don't know what's ahead of us and things can change in just a moment. What we do know is who is with us and who we're going to live for. And Father, in these moments this morning, I want to surrender myself afresh to you. Lord, I give you my body, I give you my mind, I give you my heart, I give you my passions. I give you my hands, I give you my feet. I give you where I walk, I give you what I put my hand to. I give you my family, my home, my finances, my friendships, my time, my priorities. Lord, I surrender myself afresh to you. And I ask that the God who created the cosmos, the God who created the universe, Father, may you breathe fresh life into me right now. Lord, I commit myself in 2021 to honour you and to serve you that your kingdom might come. Lord, thank you that you're here right now. Thank you that you're God with us. Thank you that you're Emmanuel. In these moments, Lord, I just want to embrace your presence. I welcome your love. And I say, whatever 2021 brings, I choose to meet it in you, in the love of God and in the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. As I say, next Sunday, we're going to prioritise just worshipping. So we're going to uh, remind ourselves the wow of who God is. And can I encourage you next Sunday morning, if you've got some cooking oil at home, if you've got some oil, can you bring some oil along to the live stream with you? And we'll have a moment that we will anoint ourselves, anoint one another and embrace the power of the Spirit of God again. And have a sense of commissioning one another to live in the power of God's spirit, to see his kingdom come. We're going to continue to respond to the Holy Spirit now and what God's been speaking this morning. I'm going to hand back to Vickers and the worship team. They're going to lead us in worship. But let's, let's continue to focus on Jesus and invite his spirit to come and work in our hearts and our lives. <laughs>